So the project for today is to replace a couple of regular switches with dimmer switches. One of the switches is just a regular single pulse switch and the other switch controls lights on three-way circuit. And if you're unfamiliar with those types of circuits, I have an electrical basics video which explains everything. Um, I suggest maybe watching that first and then coming back to this video. So in a typical single pulse switch, all you have is a couple screws here and your one black wire will hook up to one screw and the other black wire will hook up to another screw and what that's done is create a break in the circuit. So when the switch is off, power doesn't reach the light. When the switch is on, power reaches the light, the light turns on. So besides the little pigtail here, this dimmer switch is basically the same thing. It has some screws where your black wires will hook up and it has a switch the only difference is it has this little slide that controls how much voltage is actually making it to the light. It's a little bit more technical than that, but just think about it like that. If I want power going to my light, I will flip the switch up, and then using this slide, I can make the light brighter or dimmer. Now, of course, this is where the more technical part comes in. You'll see on this dimmer switch that I have, it has three screws, and the reason this dimmer switch has three screws is because it can be used to replace a, a single pulse switch where you just have the two screws or it can be used to replace a three-way switch. Your dimmer switch should come with instructions and you definitely want to pay attention to what's going on here. So just to quickly review, on a single pulse switch you have the ground screw and you have a screw to where the power can come in and you have a screw to where the power leaves Keep in mind that on a single pole switch, it doesn't really matter which one of these wires provide the hot, which one of these wires are hooked up to the hot wire and which one of these screws are hooked up to the wire that goes up to the light. All this switch is doing is just creating a break in the circuit. On your dimmer switch, in the instructions, it doesn't actually specify which wire needs to go to which screw. So it's essentially the same thing. You can hook up one wire, to this screw where it specifically tells you one of the wires need to go to this screw, one of the wires need to go to this other screw. So one wire comes into this copper screw, the other one goes into this brass screw. With your ground, this is pretty simple. Your, the pigtail on the switch just goes to your ground wire. And then keep in mind for all switches, you don't need this white wire. All this white wire should do is just get wire nutted together, the two, the however many neutral wires, the white wires you have, just get wire nutted together because all they're doing is just returning the power from the light. So the black wires are providing your power up to the light, all the white wire is doing is providing a path for the electricity to make it from the light back to your panel box and complete the circuit. So whenever you go to hook up a switch, you know, the first thing you can do is just wire not all of the neutrals together to get them out of your way. With your ground wires, same thing. There's going to be a pigtail on the dimmer switch, or if I was going to hook up the switch, I would put a pigtail on the ground screw and then hook it up to the ground wire in the box. So the only thing that you really need to pay attention to is where the black wires are going. A three-way switch is obviously a lot different. It does have a ground screw, but you'll notice it has three different screws. And instead of one brass screw being here and one being here, now your brass screws are at the bottom. And the reason is, is that this screw right here, this black screw, is where your hot wire is actually going to connect up to. And then what's going to happen is, depending on the position of the switch, it's either going to send power to this screw or it's going to send power to this screw. So where you hook up the wires is extremely important. But a couple things that you already know, you already know that the white neutrals can all be wired together. So you can get those out of the way. You already know that the pigtail, the ground, the ground wire, can be wire nutted together to your ground wire in the box. So now on a three-way circuit, you have three wires to deal with. You have the hot wire coming in, and you have the two travelers. So the one traveler is gonna be a red wire and your other wire is gonna be the black wire. And so what this diagram has done is showed you which, which one of the screws each wire goes to. So this marked wire is the hot wire coming in. 
and I'll show you how to identify the hot wire later. So just like on the regular switch where you had a brass screw, a brass screw, and then the black screw or that copper screw, your hot wire is going to go to the copper screw and then your travelers are going to hook to the brass screws. So you see we've done a lot of reviews on this channel and part of the reason is is because I didn't buy the tools that I probably should have bought in the past and it's made my life a lot more difficult. So when a company reaches out to us and says, you know, here's this tool, we'll read a little bit about it and see if it'll make our life easier and if we think it'll be better for us and better for our, our viewers, then we'll get it and review it. This is a non-contact voltage detector from Testman. They included the AAA batteries in the package, which I thought was a nice gesture. The flashlight that they added on the voltage detector is pretty ridiculous. This thing is super bright. You can almost use it just to go walk around your yard. But this is really nice if you have shadows, if you're trying to get into a tight spot and you have your headlamp and you're sitting there trying to find different wires and kind of see what you're doing in a tight spot, this flashlight will obviously light up the area. It does have a couple different ranges. It can go to low voltage, which means 12 volt up to 1000 volt or it can go to higher range, your 70 volt to 1000 volts. And down at the bottom of the screen, it has a percentage on it. So as you're detecting voltage, it'll tell you kind of, I guess how strong the voltage is in that area. So it's not gonna tell you the voltage or the percentage of voltage. It's just gonna tell you how powerful the voltage is in that area. So first thing you always wanna do when you're doing electrical work is turn off the breaker, powering the circuit that you're gonna be working on. And before I use the non-contact voltage tester, I always test it with something that I know is hot or that the power is on. So what I'm going to do is remove the face plate and check all the wiring with the non-contact voltage tester. This one is a single pole switch and this is the switch for the stairs. It's a three-way switch. I'm going to go ahead and start with the single pole switch first. It'll be the easiest to replace. So as I said, this is a single pull switch. It only has the two screws on the side and it'll have the one grounding screw. So I'll go ahead and get that hooked up, show you what that looks like. The switch has a strip gauge, which shows how far to strip the wire that will be pushed into the switch. And then there's these little holes by the screws in which will just push the copper wire into and it just holds the wire. The holes are only for 14 gauge wire. If you use 12 gauge wire, you're gonna have to use the screw. So these dimmer switches do have an up and down position. So here's the up position. And according to the diagram in our instructions, one of the wires is going to go in this screw and another wire is going to go in this screw. So this top screw won't be used. Okay, so it's pretty simple. They just poke right there in the back. Then they're held in, they won't come out. Next, I'm gonna disconnect this pigtail that I had with the other outlet. And put the grounding wire in its place. So for the three-way switch, you see there's two screws on one side, another screw on the other, and then your grounding screw. So what's important about this switch is that here you have your two travelers, and then up top on your, on your gold screw here, this is your hot coming in. So there's a lot of different uses for this non-contact voltage tester. One of these is, I've come to situations like this to where you don't really know which one is the hot wire. Somebody's tried to do some work by themselves and they've misplaced the hot wire. You don't know which one it is. What you can do is go put a wire knot on each one of these ends, go turn the power on, come down with your non-contact voltage tester and start touching each wire separately until one of these, until one of these show that it's hot. And then after that you can mark it and then go turn your power off. Maybe somebody who owned the home before you came in and tried to do some work and maybe hook something up wrong. Another thing you can do, say they try to hook up a three-way and the wires are switched and the light isn't working, what you can do is carefully pull the switch out, go turn the power back on, and then use your non-contact voltage tester to determine which one of these wires is hot. So 
as soon as you have one of these, obviously make sure you test it first to make sure that it's working properly and then after that there's all kinds of uses for these. So using the diagram and making sure that I have the switch up, I can tell which one of these travelers go on which screw and which one my which screw the hot wire goes on to. So as I said before, you can just poke these wires in the back. I remember when I did this a few years ago, it's when we first bought the or shortly after we bought the house, and I had some of this uh, 12 3 wire left over, and so I used this instead. So unfortunately, this is going to kind of come back to bite me since I had some of this tra wire that I could use for Traveler left over. Um, I used it, and now I'm going to have to try to bend these around the screws. So for these screws, it's pretty self explanatory because on a three way switch, Either the block or the, the block or the gold screw is where you put the hot wire and then your two travelers go on the other side. That's exactly what matches up with the diagram. So I'm going to poke this wire in the back. Okay, it's not coming out. Now we just have to put a traveler wire on each screw. I have the wires installed where they need to go. I went and I screwed in the screws on the other outlet and also on this one screw where I just pushed the wire in the back on this three-way switch. I screwed those in so they're not going to really have an opportunity to conduct with any of the grounds or anything if they happen to touch anything after I get the tape on. I'm going to go ahead and set these outlets back in place. I did remove the tabs on these two sides because the instructions said the tabs on the insides will have to be removed if you're going to have two of these side by side. These plastic pieces are spacers, so I'm going to go ahead and put those back on. Obviously if these little tabs sit on the outside of the drywall, you won't need those spacers. The switches are in, but I'm not going to put the cover plate on yet because these particular switches have adjustments so where you can adjust them so when you turn on the light and you make your adjustments, you can get the light just the way you want it. So you'll notice that I only put one three-way dimmer switch on this circuit. I didn't go down to the other switch and put another three-way dimmer switch on there. This means that the brightness of the lights are controlled by the three-way dimmer switch, but the light can be turned on and off by both switches. And then I come down to the switch at the bottom of the stairs, turn it on, and it's still dimmed where I want it. And regarding these adjustments, I moved them back and forth just to see what they would do and neither one of them really made a difference on my particular lights. I just have regular LED lights. I'm very impressed with the non-contact voltage detector from Tessman. This thing has a lot of great features. It's definitely a lot better than all the other non-contact voltage detectors that I have and there'll be a link in the description. These things aren't that expensive. Definitely worth having in the toolbox. I hope this video helps. I've been asked about doing a dimmer switch for a little while now. Finally got it done. And there's other people that have asked for different videos about different things, and I don't think they realize that we've actually done a bunch of electrical videos. And so if you go to Brentley Built, you can actually see where we have categorized our videos, and you can go to the electrical videos and search for the project that you're working on. If there is an electrical video you're looking for, let us know, and we'll try to make one on the subject that you're having difficulty with or something that you want to know more about. We're so grateful for everyone to support our channel. Thanks for watching.